Chapter 21, Abbas Miju gave Leng Xiao a hard time you are listening at novelfull.audio. Leng Xiao hugged her tightly and said, Su Ching, don't be sad. I was kidding. She looked at Mo Su Ching and said, the thing is, I heard a rumor that Gu Group is under severe attack from Mighty Empire these days. I wonder whom Gu Jianan has provoked. She pressed her lips together and continued, in A. City, anyone who sets himself against Mighty Empire is dead meat. I am truly sorry for Gu Jianan right now that it's like getting that his temple. Pressed that against the muzzle of a gun. Although Leng Xiao had said she was sorry for Gu Jianan, her face revealed that she obviously took pleasure in his misfortune. She would lose no opportunity to express her support for Mo Suqing by abusing her enemy. Catching the words, Mighty Empire, Mo Suqing's expression changed a little. Didn't Yi Zhongjue work for Mighty Empire? She pondered over the whole thing for a while and then said, So Gu Group had an accident. No wonder Gu Jianan didn't show up today. I was thinking about how it is unlike him to give up all of a sudden. Back in high school when he was trying to pursue dot me, he sure waited for me outside my house every day. Not a single day did he fail to show up. I will give him this credit. He is a man of perseverance. Mo Suqing gave a bitter laugh and continued, however, ever since I dot found out that about him and Mo Sulian that I've cut all ties. His personal affairs are no longer mine to worry about. Leng Xiao's mouth slightly twitched. When I told you Gu Group is suffering some mishap, why did your expression change? Mo Suqing leaned against the wall and replied thoughtfully, it's not a big deal. It just occurred to me that Yi Zhongjue is an employee of Mighty Empire. Leng Xiao didn't connect the dots at first. Then, are you implying that Yi Zhongjue has something to do with it? Mo Suqing tilted her mouth and said dismissively, of course not. I just remembered he works for them, that's all. He's only an assistant. What can he do? That's true, Leng Xiao nodded in agreement, anyway, it's a good thing he didn't show up. You don't need to sneak into and out of the office like a thief now, she joked as an afterthought. Mo Suqing pushed off the wall and put on a sinister smile, what did you say? Leng Xiao suddenly realized that she had said something inappropriate. She laughed nervously and said, what? I don't have been dot quite forgetful recently. What did I say? I completely forgot. She feigned ignorance and quickly fled before Mo Suqing had time to react. Mo Suqing smiled fondly after her. They had been friends forever. How could she not know Leng Xiao was only kidding? To be honest, she did feel good about not having Gu Jianan harass her anymore. Mo Suqing walked out of the restroom and saw that Leng Xiao had her head on the desk, looking desolate. She approached with concern. What happened dot to dot you? You were fine in the restroom just now. Why are you unhappy all of a sudden? Leng Xiao raised her head and looked at her miserably. Her lips moved but her voice was less than a whisper. Yet Mo Suqing made it out. Abyss Miju came. I don't know why, but she just flipped out and yelled at me with no apparent reason. She said I do not work hard enough and am not at my desk all the time, and that if I continue like this, she's gonna fire me, Mo Suqing's brow furrowed. She looked at the others who were working around them, their heads hung low. She told you this in front of everybody. Leng Xiao pressed her lips together and nodded slowly. Mo Suqing's face darkened. Abyss Miju never flared up like this without a cause. Why had she gotten mad at Yao today? Mo Suqing could not explain her behavior, but she was certain of one thing. She was not happy about it. Leng Xiao was a friend and sister to her. Even if she was the one who had been humiliated today, she wouldn't have been half angry. Mo Suqing patted Leng Xiao on the shoulder and said, All right. Stop thinking about it and do your work. Then, she walked toward the editor. In. Chief's office. Leng Xiao was going to stop her, but it was too late. Mo Suqing pushed open the door to An Huilin's office. An Huilin looked up. 
Her expression was very ugly, as if something entirely unacceptable had happened to her. What are you doing here? Mo Suqing looked at her with a stony face and said without preamble, Yeah, you are the boss and have the right to admonish your subordinates. However, a lot of people didn't come in today and many of those who did are hardly working. Why did you dot only dot get mad at Ling Xiao? Because she looks like a pushover. And Huilin sneered. What, are you standing up for Ling Xiao? So what if I am? Mo Suqing returned coldly. Humph. And Huilin snorted. Nowadays, no one likes to stand out like you do anymore. It's okay, I'll cut you some slack because you are stepping up for a friend. But I can tell you one thing, I gave Ling Xiao a dressing dot down not because of anything work dot related. I won't tell you the real reason, so you can go now. Mo Suqing was puzzled. It's unrelated to work. But the two of them don't have any interaction outside work, so how could there be another reason? However, An Huilin had asked her to leave, so barring a change in her expression, Mo Suqing only said, then, I hope you won't use work as an excuse to settle personal scores again. She turned and walked away, leaving a steely dot looking in Huilin behind. She glared at the general direction of Ling Xiao, her eyes twinkling as if with tears. For the entire morning, Mo Suqing too wasn't in a very productive mood. The fact that she had a superstar to stalk in the afternoon for a gossip story and the dot incident with dot an Huilin picking at Ling Xiao did not help with concentration. Finally, it was lunch time. Leng Xiao and Mo Suqing went out for lunch. The dishes dot had yet to come. Mo Suqing looked at Leng Xiao and asked, Yao, have you had some disagreement with Abyss Miju dot previously? Not that I know of, Leng Xiao shook her head slowly. She seemed to be a little distracted. Apparently, she was still thinking about what had happened in the morning. That's weird. Mo Suqing frowned. When I confronted Abyss Miju, she said she didn't treat you like that because of work stuff. But, she didn't mention the real reason either. I thought you might have offended her in one way or another, and that's why she gave you such a hard time. Leng Xiao moaned, her tone full of sorrow, that's not possible. For one thing, we haven't worked for the magazine for a long time, for another, I have helped get all the big scoops. I really don't think I have done anything worth her wrath in the workplace and I certainly don't have any interaction with her in private, so how could I possibly offend her? She was crazy, embarrassing herself like that in front of everybody. Forget it. Let's not think about it anymore. Mo Suqing patted her on the shoulder and said, I'll tell you what, you go back home and get some rest in the afternoon. I will gather the news for today by myself. Okay. Leng Xiao thought for a moment and nodded. Indeed, she was not herself today. Okay. You be extra careful, call me if anything happens, but no problem, Mo Suqing tore open the packaging of the chopsticks and handed them to her. Don't worry. I'll be fine. They finished lunch fairly quickly. When they were about to part ways, Leng Xiao suggested casually, we haven't had anything huge for some time. I have an idea. When I am back, you and I should go dig up something together. What's the idea? Mo Suqing looked at her curiously. Leng Xiao said mysteriously, This morning, we were talking about Mighty Empire, one of the two giants in A. City. With the unparalleled being the other. We know that since the new CEO of Mighty Empire showed up three years ago, no one has seen him in person or found out what he looks like yet. So I say let's be the first one to do that. It will undoubtedly be the top story. Leng Xiao looked at Mo Suqing, full of pride. Suqing, isn't it a good idea? Mo Suqing looked at her and replied, as far as I know, no one knows what the CEO of the Unparalleled looks like either. Why don't you suggest looking him up instead? Leng Xiao said easily, I'm just more interested in Mighty Empire, are you coming with me or not? Then, she swung Mo Suqing's arm back and forth pleadingly. Mo Suqing gave her a, what should I do dot with dot you, look. 
Fine. We will start gathering information as soon as you are back. Now, go home and get some rest. Okay. Leng Xiao nodded, beaming, her mood having improved considerably. Then, she added, Su Ching, I will begin my research on Mighty Empire at home this afternoon. Be careful when you're on your own. She gave Mo Su Ching a broad smile and reassured her, We didn't bust Guan Zishuan last time, but I believe we will definitely catch him this time. I am sure the information is correct. Leng Xiao shut herself up when she noticed the look on Mo Su Ching's face. She had forgotten that their last attempt to bust Guan Zixuan was the time Mo Suqing had found out about Gu Jianan and Mo Sulian. Mo Suqing's lips twitched a little. She smiled lightly and spoke in an ironic tone, It's okay. It's all behind me now. I have made my peace with it. I have gotten married, haven't I, don't have any scruples when you are talking to me. Despite what Mo Suqing had said, Leng Xiao still felt guilty about saying the wrong dot things. Don't feel bad. Look at you screwing dot up your pretty face like that. Now, go home and get some rest. Mo Suqing said in a brisk tone and playfully pinched Leng Xiao on the cheek. Leng Xiao looked at her, unsure. Are you really alright? I'm fine. Mo Suqing looked at her with a big smile. Leng Xiao heaved a sigh of relief before saying, Then, I'm going home. Okay, bye. Mo Suqing waved a little and dot watched dot her leave. When Leng Xiao's figure became a small dot, Mo Suqing's smile faded. She remained at the same spot for a long time before turning and walking back to the company. Chapter 22 Enter Guan Zixuan You are listening at Novel Full dot Audio. Mo Suqing walked into the office, grabbed her bag and camera, then left for the international airport. According to Dot a reliable source, Dot Xi and Leng Xiao that were told Guan Zixuan had been abroad for an award dot ceremony these last two days. The official announcement was that he would come back to a dot city dot tomorrow afternoon, while the informant had told them he would actually be back a day earlier with his mysterious girlfriend. On the way to the airport, Mo Suqing kept urging the taxi driver to drive faster. It had been a little late when she had left the office, so she was worried she would miss Guan Zixuan's arrival. If she could dot be e the one to expose this dot story today, all the hard work she and Ling Xiao had done would pay off. The moment the taxi arrived at the airport, Mo Suqing got off and ran towards the entrance. Suddenly, she experienced some discomfort in her lower abdomen. She stopped dead in her tracks and the awful truth dawned on her. No way. How could dot her period dot come during dot such a critical time? Mo Suqing found herself in a predicament. She looked at her white suit and immediately regretted sending Leng Xiao home. What should she do now? Mo Suqing hurriedly walked towards the restroom, she couldn't deal with anything else right now. She rushed inside the restroom and immediately heard a weird sound coming from one of the cubicles. It was a suppressive moan that sounded like either excitement or pain. Mo Suqing was a little taken aback. Is someone sick? She asked tentatively, is anyone there? The sound came to a sudden stop. The restroom became so quiet that it was as if no one, or nothing, had made any noise at all. Mo Suqing was puzzled. Had it been but an illusion. She got a creepy feeling all of a sudden. Hello. Is someone in there? Answer me. Mo Suqing didn't know what to do. She could feel the blood was flowing freely out of her private area. If she backed out, people would stare at her like she was a rare creature or something. Mo Suqing plucked up her courage and called out again, Who is there in the cubicle? I. I. I am not afraid of you. In the cubicle, Guan Zixuan's expression darkened even more. What a stupid woman, walking into the wrong restroom in the first place and now talking by herself. Does she think she is an actress? He was on the brink of exploding with desire and rage. He had ordered his assistant, Yuan, to keep watch outside. How did the woman come inside? Guan Zixuan took a deep breath. 
he could surely yell at someone this second. The woman kneeling in front of him had a pair of seductive almond eyes, all misty and blurry. Guan Zixuan could stop himself from crying out, but the woman's self-control was apparently weaker than his because a small moaning sound was spilling from the corner of her mouth. Which made Imo Suqing even more confident that someone was in there. She realized that this person could be having an asthma attack or something and was in need of help. Thinking of this, Emo Suqing forgot all about her own trouble and quickly walked over, trying to open the door to the cubicle. Are you sick in there? Don't panic. I'm going to find someone now. Emo Suqing opened the door to the restroom. Guan Zixuan's heart was in his throat. The woman is insane. What is she calling someone for? To watch his live porn. He contained his anger gritted his teeth and said in a deep husky voice, Hey, woman. I think you walked into the wrong restroom. M.O. Suqing stopped her progress. A man. Had I gone into the wrong restroom? She wavered between staying and leaving. Then, it hit her that there was something not quite right in the man's voice. What if he really was sick, and he was too proud to ask for help? She would never forgive herself if she just walked away and something happened to him. So, our virtuous Ms. Emo walked up to the door to the cubicle and spoke saintly, don't worry. I won't laugh at you or tell anyone about this. I will help you. I believe you are too weak to open the door right now. Please step aside, I will try to knock the door open. Guan Zixuan's handsome face was now twisted into something unrecognizable. The woman is crazy. Who the hell needs her help? He felt sick. What if more people came because of her meddling? He also felt regretful about trying to seek adventure by doing it in a restroom cubicle. Thinking of it, he promptly made a decision. He pushed away the woman in front of him and clothed himself. The woman, who had been half dot naked until now, immediately understood what Guan Zixuan meant and started to cover herself up too. Right when Imo Suqing was about to knock down the door. Guan Zixuan spoke again, don't damage the door. I can come out by myself. Then, he opened the door. Imo Suqing was shocked to see Guan Zixuan. She would have recognized the face that drove countless fans nuts every time it appeared even if it were covered in cuts and bruises. To uncover his love life, she and Ling Xiao had been doing a lot of research. Not conscious of what she was doing, Mo Suqing pointed her camera at Guan Zixuan and snapped away. Guan Zixuan had never expected his luck to be this bad. The woman outside the cubicle was no other than a gossip columnist, who was the last person he wanted to encounter. Guan Zixuan was too caught off guard to fend off the camera until Mo Suqing had taken several photos. He quickly blocked his face with a hand. But, he knew it was too late. M.O. Suqing's mood had plummeted and soared in a matter of a few minutes like a roller coaster. She had thought she would go back to the magazine HQ empty handed because of her untimely period. However, she ended up having everything she had come for without any difficulty. Guan Zixuan showed up himself. What could she possibly do other than taking the advantage of the situation? The woman with him was not properly dressed. Their background was a restroom cubicle. She guaranteed that once the photos made their way in the magazine, they would cause an uproar. Anyone who had eyes could guess what had happened in the cubicle. Needless to say, the woman next to Guan Zixuan was his mysterious girlfriend. Mo Suqing was so excited that she completely cleared her menstrual misery out of her mind. The moment Guan Zixuan had realized what was happening, he pounded on Imo Suqing to snatch the camera out of her hand. It was not the first day Imo Suqing had become a gossip columnist. She had expected this, and she dodged. Guan Zixuan made a second attempt, but Imo Suqing spoke quickly, Mr. Guan, you have your image to consider. This is a restroom at the airport, a public space. If you keep acting like this, I'm going to shout for help. Let's see who gets the short end of the stick then. Mo Suqing knew she had the upper hand as she looked at Guan Zixuan. She was sure he wouldn't dare come near again. 
If she screamed, people would come. Then, even if she hadn't taken any pictures, the headlines on tomorrow's paper would still be. Actor Guan Zixuan's rendezvous with mysterious girlfriend in airport restroom. Mo Suqing became more and more gleeful as she thought about it. Guan Zixuan glared at Mo Suqing as if he would love to swallow her raw and whole. He knew that with Mu Dot Linger by his side, people would only reach one conclusion. He dropped Mu Linger, who had been standing there helplessly, a hint with his eyes. Mu Linger nodded knowingly and quickly retreated. Guan Zixuan looked at Mo Suqing and said, What do you want? Spit it out. An idea hit Mo Suqing. Well, I can delete all the photos. I'm just an ordinary traveler who happens to have a camera with me and happens to recognize you. Mo Suqing hesitated a second before placing a price, if you buy me some sanitary pads, I'll delete the photos. What do you say? Upon hearing the word sanitary pads, Guan Zixuan's handsome face darkened in an instant. He was not a pervert, okay. He was a normal guy who did not buy sanitary pads. He was filled with rage that he couldn't vent. Think of something else, he hissed, his voice strained. Mo Suqing thought about the photos and became even bolder. You don't get to bargain. Guan Zixuan looked at her hatefully. Can't you think of anything else? I really can't bring myself to buy sanitary pads. It's just too humiliating. Mo Suqing sneered threateningly. Maybe once you see your pictures in the restroom with your girlfriend on tomorrow's headlines, you will find buying sanitary pads not humiliating at all. You, Guan Zixuan pointed at Mo Suqing as if he could kill her. Just you wait. I will remember you. Mo Suqing raised her eyebrows. Good. I'm not afraid of you remembering me. You have no idea how much I love it to watch people trying to get rid of me but are not able to. I will remember you too, Mr. Guan. Aren't you afraid if someone shows up while you are doing it in the cubicle and your dot penis gets to so frightened that IT will dot shrink away and never want to come out again? Guan Zixuan almost couldn't stop himself from choking Mo Suqing to death. How could there be such a dot vicious woman? Okay dot okay dot okay, he said in quick succession. I'll get the pads. I hope you are true to your words. Guan Zixuan took out a black mask from his pocket and put it on, then walked out of the restroom expressionlessly. Mo Suqing hurried over to close the door behind him. This was the men's room. The last thing she wanted was for some guy to walk in and found her there. It would be so embarrassing. This reminded her of the other night when she, being very drunk, had also entered the wrong restroom, which had resulted in her having sex and getting married with Yi Zhongjue. Mo Suqing wanted to give herself a good slap. What is wrong with me lately why do I keep dot walking into the wrong restroom? Is there an invisible thread pulling me to the men's room or something? After a long time, someone knocked on the door to the restroom. Mo Suqing put her ears against the door, listening intently to the movement outside. Guan Zixuan said in a low voice, it's me. Open the door. Dot recognizing his voice, Mo Suqing slowly cracked open the door. A man in his twenties was also there. Mo Suqing gave Guan Zixuan a puzzled look. Guan Zixuan answered her unsaid question, rolling his eyes, This is my assistant, not a random guy. Reassured, Mo Suqing opened the door fully. Chapter 23, Menstrual Cramps Hurt Like Hell You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Guan Zixuan pushed past the door and walked in. When he had left the restroom, he had realized why the woman had insisted that he buy her some sanitary pads. It must have been her period and the fact that she was wearing white clothes. Now that Guan Zixuan was a lot less exasperated, he looked at Mo Suqing carefully and decided that she was actually quite good. Looking. She had glossy black hair and a pair of sparkling eyes that seemed to talk. Of course, if none of these had happened, he would be even more impressed by her. He tossed her the pads and said in a dot com dot voice, can you delete the photos now? Mo Suqing, arms full of sanitary pads and the camera, 
couldn't help but imagine how Guan Zixuan's diehard fans would react if they knew she had sent their idol on such an errand as buying sanitary pads. They would probably tear her open. She quickly comforted herself. Fortunately, no one knew about this except for herself, Guan Zixuan and the Almighty God. Mo Suqing always kept her promise. Presently, she took off the strap of the camera from her neck and tossed the device to Guan Zixuan. Then, she stepped into one of the cubicles with the pads. When Mo Suqing came out, her face was pale as a sheet. Most of the time, her period hurt like hell. She had hoped it wouldn't be that bad this time, but she had been wrong. During the short time she had busied herself with the pad, the pain had intensified a great deal. Noticing that she had turned white, Guan Zixuan gave her camera back and asked, Are you all right? Then, he quickly added, Not that I would care if you were to die right here. Mo Suqing did not have much energy left to bicker, so she only rolled her eyes and said, It's not your business whether I die or not. Just go now, so I won't waste your precious time. Guan Zixuan twitched his mouth, not saying anything. Woman has a temper. Suddenly, he noticed a scarlet spot on Mo Suqing's white pants. The tips of his ears turned slightly red. He took off his jacket and tossed it to Mo Suqing. You are lucky I am in a benevolent mood today. Take my jacket. Don't give it back and don't thank me. Then, he walked out of the door without a second glance, eager to leave the airport with his assistant. Mo Suqing was surprised. She held his black jacket in her arms and thought, although Guan Zixuan looks like a flippant person, he has a good heart. After tying his jacket around her waist, she woke up the screen of her phone and opened up the photos she had taken of Guan Zixuan and the woman. She changed her mind. Her original plan was to ask Guan Zixuan to buy some sanitary pads for her in exchange for the deletion of the photos in the camera. Xi and Leng Xiao always took pictures with both phone and camera. It seemed that Guan Zixuan hadn't been aware of this key fact. Therefore, she still got those photos in her phone. It was a pity the woman's face was a little concealed because Guan Zixuan had blocked part of it. Anyway, she had planned she would still make the photos public in tomorrow's issue, neglecting her promise to Guan Zixuan. The face of his unknown girlfriend being obscure would only make everything even more mysterious and give the readers more room for imagination. But now, she found herself hesitating. She had promised him she wouldn't use the pictures, so she wouldn't. Besides, Guan Zixuan was not at all the heartless person the media had portrayed him to be. At the very least, he had given his jacket to her, a total stranger, which made her view him in a different light. Mo Suqing stood there, watching Guan Zixuan and his assistant disappear from sight. Then, she too left the airport. Her lower abdomen was still hurting like hell. It was early and she would really love to go home, except that it occurred to her she had once again failed to gather any saucy materials for the magazine. If she didn't produce anything for tomorrow's issue, Abbas Miju might give her and Leng Xiao another hard time. Thinking of this, Mo Suqing frowned and hailed a taxi back to the company. She still had time to write a story. The important thing was to come up with something, so that the column wouldn't be empty tomorrow. In the taxi, Mo Suqing's face had gone really pale. The driver offered, Miss, do you want me to take you to the hospital? Mo Suqing shook her head slowly, No, thanks. I'm fine. Please take me to Trend Magazine. The driver sighed and commented, Young people nowadays are so hard that working they don't care about their health anymore. Mo Suqing pressed her pale lips together, not saying anything. In the end, the taxi driver respected her decision and took her back to the company. Back in the office, Mo Suqing felt a lot of blood had flown out of her body, almost feeling like she had peed herself. She put her phone and camera down on the desk and immediately went to the restroom. The moment she left, Bai Tingnan stood up from her seat and walked to Mo Suqing's. Bai Tingnan had seen Mo Suqing hurried out of the office after lunch and knew she was going to gather materials for her story. She was back surprisingly early. 
Why Ting Nan would like to know what materials Imo Suching had gathered. She turned on Imo Suching's camera, but did not find anything in there. Why Ting Nan frowned. This isn't right. Hasn't she gone out to gather some news? How come there aren't any photos? She found it hard to believe. Why Ting Nan took up Imo Suching's phone. She had accidentally seen her press in the password one time. She quickly unlocked her phone. After Mo Suching had browsed the photos. Dot on dot the phone at the airport, she had not returned to the home screen. Therefore, when Bai Ting Nan unlocked the phone, the first thing she saw were pictures of Guan Zixuan. The corner of her mouth curled into a malicious smile. Mo Suching walked out of the restroom. Everyone was busy writing their stories. She had barely sat down when An Huilin approached. She gave Mo Suching a stern look and demanded, Didn't you go out with Leng Xiao in the afternoon? Where is she? Mo Suching lied, her face hardly blushing and her heartbeat hardly quickening, I'm not feeling well, so she made me come back first and went to gather the news by herself. Mo Suching's pale face was evidence itself. Even though the person she had lied to was an Huilin, she could not help but believe her. If you are so unwell, just go home and get some rest. Mo Suching managed a smile. I'm fine. I'll go after I finish my story for tomorrow. And Huilin gave her another look, but did not say anything more before going away. Mo Suching worked until seven in the evening. Due to a lack of material, she could only make do with some lousy stuff. By the time she finished writing, she had developed a headache. When Mo Suching was about to go home, almost everyone had left the office. Strangely, Bai Ting Nan, who was usually the first one to leave, was still working on her story, totally unruffled by the late hour. Mo Suching cast a curious glance at her, but did not think too much about it. She felt as if she would die from working too hard on her own story. Menstrual pains made her whole body weak and sick. To make things worse, it started raining when she stepped outside. She moaned inwardly, what are the odds? Staring at the curtain of rain, she remembered she had an umbrella in the office. However, she had finally got out of there, she really didn't want to go back inside again. Presently, a taxi approached. Mo Suching stuck out her hand to hail it. She let out a sigh of relief after she g-o-t-e-d i in the car. She would be home in no time. Then, she would sleep through the pain. The car stopped in front of the gate of the housing estate. Mo Suching looked at her apartment in the distance, feeling helpless. If she ran over there and got wet in the rain, her belly would surely hurt even more later in the evening. But, it seemed that she didn't have a choice. Taxis were not allowed in the estate. In the end, she forced herself to get off the car and dot ran dot toward her apartment. Meanwhile, Yi Zhongjue, too, didn't realize it had started to rain until he got off work and emerged from the building of Mighty Empire. He had planned to pick up Mo Suching from work but eventually desisted from it, remembering how unwilling she had been about the idea. Besides, she must have got home by this hour. No sooner had he driven his car to the gate of the estate than he saw a figure in white sprinting in the rain, a black jacket tied fast to her waist. Yi Zhongjue steered the car into the estate and was about to drive into the underground garage when he saw the figure fall on the ground. Her butt landed square on the ground, drenching her white clothes with rainwater. Yi Zhongjue stopped what he was doing, got off the car and ran toward her. Mo Suching had been in such a hurry that she hadn't noticed the puddle there. As a result, she had slipped and fallen right on the ground. Now, she was seized with a severe cramp in her abdomen. What bad luck she was in today. Everything had turned against her. She was about to get up when she felt herself lifted up by a pair of powerful arms. She snapped her head up and saw Yi Zhongjue's handsome face. He carried Mo Suching and walked toward the apartment, not paying the least attention to his own sodden clothes. Rainwater dripped from his chin, making him appear wild and tough. However, there was also anger under this appearance, albeit thin as a piece of paper. 
Yi Zhongjue carried her all the way up to their floor, silent as the grave. Dot when they were in the elevator, Mo Suqing could hear his thundering heartbeat. Her originally pale cheeks flushed. She must have been possessed by some kind of witchcraft for the last few days. Here she was, having the worst menstrual cramps and thinking about how fast her heartbeat was. She didn't know why, but every time Yi Zhongjue was nearby, she that would lose dot control of her heart. Yi Zhongjue carried Mo Suqing to their bedroom and said in a tone as cold as his expression, take a hot shower. He was fuming. Why didn't she just call and ask me to pick her up when it's raining cat and dog? Is she really so averse to? Getting picked up by me however, he didn't have the heart to admonish her, seeing her freezing pale face. In the end, he suppressed his anger and left the room. Yi Zhongjue went downstairs to park his car. He was taken aback when he put his hands on the steering wheel. Why is there blood on his hands? The truth dawned on him in an instant. The black jacket on her waist and the blood on his hands could only lead to one explanation. It was her period. Chapter 24 The Tender Side of Yi Zhongjue You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The instant Yi Zhongjue understood what had happened, he quickly drove the car into the garage. In the elevator, he searched information about menstruation on his phone. When he read about menstrual cramps, his eyebrows wrinkled hard. When he was carrying Mo Suqing, he could feel her body trembling. Was it because she had been in pain? He read on. During the period, one should avoid getting wet in the rain or drinking cold water. Now, Yi Zhongjue was in great alarm. He was sure she had been in pain. What's worse, she had got wet in the rain. His lips pressed together tightly. She really doesn't know how to take care of herself, does she? Yi Zhongjue continued to Google for information about how to alleviate period pains. When the elevator reached his floor, he was still unsure of what to do. He dialed a number on his phone. Ming Jinhua was delighted when she heard her son's voice on the other side of the phone. What a pleasant surprise. Hello, dear. How are you? Yi Zhongjue closed his mouth. He had thought carefully about what to say, but now that the phone had got through, he was back to square one. Hello. Why aren't you speaking? What's up? Ming Jinhua asked. After staying silent for a bit longer, Yi Zhongjue finally readied himself. There was no one around, but he still found himself extremely uneasy when he asked the following question with difficulty, Mom. Do you know any effective ways to combat menstrual cramps? What, what did you say? Ming Jinhua wasn't sure if she had heard it right. A flicker of blush passed across Yi Zhongjue's usual poker face. His voice became even more unlike him, I said, what do you do about menstrual pains? Listening to his weird tone, Ming Jinhua could not help but laugh. It looked like her son had a girlfriend. This was good news of course. He was a big boy now. In fact, he should have had a girlfriend long ago. Mom. Can you please stop laughing? How Yi Zhongjue wanted to dig himself a hole and hide in there. All right, all right. I won't laugh anymore. Well, there aren't real effective ways to ease the pain, but boiled water with brown sugar should help a little. Also, do not drink or touch cold water. Ming Jinhua paused a moment, then added, if you have some fresh ginger, add a slice or two to the brown sugar water. It will help even more. Okay, I get it now. Yi Zhongjue quickly hung up, feeling he had just finished a conversation that was much more difficult than all the business negotiations he had conducted. He hoped his mother hadn't guessed what he had in mind. The day he and Mo Suqing registered the marriage, he had lied about telling his folks that they dot had got married to put an end to her hesitation. But the fact was, his family did not know anything about it. His parents probably never expected that he would get married so soon. After all, he had always given women a wide berth. After hanging up the phone, Yi Zhongjue returned to his normal self and opened the door to his apartment. The Yi Residence 
Ming Jinhua had a big smile on her face when she hung up the phone. Yi Wendian looked up and inquired, Is it you? Yeah, she replied, hardly containing her smile. Yi Wendian turned a page of the book he was reading and asked casually, What is he up to? Ming Jinhua was always fastidious about her appearance, so she was still very attractive even in her forties. Now, she gave Yi Wentian a confidential look and beamed. I bet your son has a girlfriend. Yi Wentian dot instantly dot put his book aside and looked at Ming Jinhua. How do you know? Doesn't he hate anything about relationships? When did he start to find girlfriends on his own initiative? Ming Jinhua gave him a stern look. What, can't he find a girlfriend on his own? He is 20.5. Many who are at his age dot have dot children already. Why can't my son find a girlfriend, huh? Yi Wendian shook his head tiredly. The woman was obviously putting words in his mouth. It wasn't the first time she distorted his meaning. Whatever. So he had a girlfriend. We'll wait for him to tell us when he wants to. Ming Jinhua nodded, you are right. When Yi Zhongjue returned to the bedroom, Mo Suqing had curled into a ball under the blanket like a wounded animal. He could almost perceive the subtle shivering of the blanket. His heart wrenched. She must be in great pain. Otherwise, she would never show her weakness. The thought made his heart ache even more. Right, brown sugar water. Bringing an umbrella with him, Yi Zhongjue hurriedly left the apartment for a supermarket near the estate. Mo Suqing vaguely heard the sound of the door opening. Not long after, the door closed shut again. She had been too weak to turn around. The only thing she had managed was to wrap herself in the blanket and curl into a ball. After buying a hot dot water bottle, ginger powder and brown sugar, Yi Zhongjue hurried back to the apartment. The first thing he did was pour water into the dot water pouch. He was going to buy an electric one, but then decided he couldn't wait for it to slowly heat up. He couldn't possibly dot feel exactly what she was feeling, but seeing her hurt like that made him almost as pained. After the hot water was poured, Yi Zhongjue quickly brought it to the room. For a time, Mo Suqing thought she had fainted and lost consciousness, until she heard the door open once again. Yi Zhongjue went inside. He gently lifted the blanket, placed the water pouch against her belly, and covered the blanket back up. Then, he increased the temperature of the air conditioner before leaving her alone. Mo Suqing heard steps getting nearer and felt warmth seep through her belly. The throbbing pain seemed to ease a little. Her face smoothed out. In the kitchen, Yi Zhongjue stared at the instructions on his phone, his brow as high as it possibly could. It shouldn't be difficult. He would just add some brown sugar and ginger powder to the water and wait for it to boil. After half an hour, Yi Zhongjue followed common sense and made some very satisfactory ginger tea. He walked back to the room with the ginger tea. Mo Suqing's expression was less intense and pale than when they just came back home. Yi Zhongjue placed the tea on the nightstand and gently propped Mo Suqing up. Mo Suqing moaned, which Yi Zhongjue responded with even gentler motions. He spoke with a voice as soft as a breeze brushing one's face, Come, Su Qing. Be a good girl and finish this tea, so you will feel better. Mo Su Qing shook her head without thinking. She remembered her mother had also prepared some ginger tea for her in the past. And she remembered she hadn't liked the taste. Since her mother passed away, she hadn't tasted it for a very long time. Yi Zhongjue spooned some tea to her lips to feed her, but she frowned and resisted, so the tea just trickled down her cheek. Yi Zhongjue frowned himself, his handsome brows lifting. At this rate, the tea would go cold before she finished it. He took a huge gulp of tea and held it in his mouth. Then. He kissed Mo Suqing directly on the lips and slowly pushed the liquid into her mouth. After she swallowed it, he continued to feed her a second gulp in the same method. Mo Suqing vaguely felt something warm cover her mouth and then there was that strange taste. However, after she drank it, 
her belly seemed to hurt less. Again and again, she expectantly waited for the warm stuff to cover her mouth and pour the liquid into it. Yi Zhongjue half coaxed, half forced Mo Suqing to finish the entire bowl of ginger tea. When the last gulp was fed into her mouth, he gave a sigh of relief. Finally. Looking at Mo Suqing's reddish lips, he dot could not help but give them another peck. He knew that she was not well, so he only did it lightly and briefly. Then, he gently tucked her into bed and went outside with the empty bowl. Only after he had tidied everything up did he notice that his shirt was clinging to his body. He laughed lightly. When it came to her, he became an incurable big fool. Yi Zhongjue took a hot shower afterwards. When he went to bed, he saw Mo Suqing's cheeks had become rosy and her countenance healthy. She must have got better. Yi Zhongjue quietly lay down beside her, listening to her even breathing and feeling a sense of deep satisfaction that was new to him. In the middle of the night, Yi Zhongjue was woken by Mo Suqing's movement. He was a light sleeper. Therefore, he was awake the instant Mo Suqing had shifted. He turned on the lamp and saw that Mo Suqing had again curled into a ball, holding her belly with both hands. Yi Zhongjue slowly pulled her hands away and replaced them with one of his own big hands. He began to rub her belly gently. Mo Suqing felt a pleasant, warm sensation on her belly which helped soothe the throbbing pain. Gradually, she quieted down and slipped into a deep sleep. The next morning, Mo Suqing opened her eyes and discovered that Yi Zhongjue was sleeping right next to her. They were so close to each other that she could hear his breathing. On her belly was his warm, big hand. Suddenly, she felt touched, a feeling she hadn't had for ages. Did he rub her belly to make her feel better last night? They had only known each other for a couple of days. Why would he do such a kind thing? She looked at Yi Zhongjue's eyelashes, long as a pair of hand-held fans. Also, his face, when he was asleep, was especially handsome and charming. Mo Suqing nearly forgot herself when she thus stared at him. Then, Yi Zhongjue shifted a little. Expecting him to be awake at any minute, she quickly dot shut dot her eyes. Mo Suqing decided to sleep a little longer. By the time she woke up, it was almost ten. Mo Suqing found the space next to her empty. Yi Zhongjue had got up. She glanced over at the alarm clock. It was nearly ten o'clock. She immediately rolled to her side and jumped up. Oh no. She had overslept. She knew she could not make it on time to work. Regretful about going back to sleep, she started to get dressed. As soon as she was fully dressed, Yi Zhongjue came in with a bowl of ginger tea. Chapter 25 Do Not Reject Me Again You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Mo Suqing wheeled around and saw Yi Zhongjue standing there, looking at her expressionlessly. After a while, he said, Don't worry. I already dot told dot your company that you will dot be taking dot a day off. Rest at home today. You can go back to work tomorrow. Then, he walked to the side of the bed with the bowl. Drink this first. Mo Suqing blushed. She could not help it when she remembered that he knew about her period. She turned her head to one side shyly and asked, How do you know where I work? Your good friend Leng Xiao called. I answered the phone and told her you would take a day off. Yi Zhongjue said, handing her the tea. Mo Suqing took it and asked, Did she say what she had called me for? Yi Zhongjue shook his head. No. She didn't say much. Probably because she found that it was me who answered the phone. Mo Suqing held her breath and finished the ginger tea in one gulp. Her belly warmed up immediately. She felt a lot better than yesterday. She couldn't help but ask, did you make dot this? She found herself dubious. After all, he was a guy. Yi Zhongjue replied, his tone a little uneasy, yeah. I saw that you were in great pain so I asked someone how to alleviate it. Oh. Thanks. Mo Suqing lowered her head, blushing. 
Yi Zhongjue gazed at her without saying anything for a long while. Mo Suqing thought he had left and raised her head back up. Their eyes met, and she tumbled into the depth of Dada's eyes. Mo Suqing felt lost and disoriented. Why would my heart skip a beat when I looked into those deep, calm eyes? Stop looking at me like that. It's really awkward, Mo Suqing said in a timid, small voice, which had an effect of a cat brushing past you in a tantalizing way. Yi Zhongjue raised his eyebrows and his expression quickly returned to normal, almost as if those eyes that had confused Mo Suqing just now did not belong to him at all. Okay. Give me the bowl. Today, you will take a good rest and dot recuperate at dot home dot don't go dot anywhere, breakfast is on the table. Have some after washing up. Then, he left the room with the bowl. Mo Suqing sat on the edge of the bed, astonished. She remembered she had had some ginger tea last night too, but somehow it didn't taste quite the same. She frowned in bewilderment and sat there for a while before getting up. After having breakfast, Mo Suqing walked past the study and saw that Yi Zhongjue was dot busy with dot his work. His face was very serious and focused, which made him particularly attractive. No wonder there was a saying that a man was the most handsome when he was working hard. He was unusually good dot looking dot at dot that moment. Before, she had felt a lot of pressure whenever Yi Zhongjue was nice to her. But now, she also felt deeply touched. Come to think of it, she couldn't possibly reject him in a situation like that of yesterday, could she? She blinked and took a deep breath, adjusting to a new mindset. Okay then. I'll learn how to let things be. Yi Zhongjue had finished a call with Lin Ran. When he looked up, he found Mo Suqing standing by the door. He walked to her and spoke in a deep, cello-like voice, How do you feel? Mo Suqing smiled. A lot better. Actually, she bit her lips before finishing her sentence, You don't have to stay at home with me. I am fine by myself. If you fall behind your work because of me, I'll feel really bad. Yi Zhongjue wrinkled his brow. She was so polite to him that he could feel she still viewed him as an outsider. What are they? He wondered. Two strangers who happen to sleep on the same bed. He sighed inwardly. It looked dot like he had out a long way to go before she. Falls dot in love with him, if she ever. Does he change the subject, after what happened yesterday, I decided that T.O. drive you to work and pick you up from work every day. M.O. Suqing was about to protest, but he didn't give her a chance. Do not reject me again. He said. He looked at her and continued, it's not a big deal. Mighty Empire and Trend Magazine are more or less on the same route. Also, I don't want something similar to happen again. M.O. Suqing swallowed what she had wanted to say. After a while, she relented, all right. In any case, everyone in her company had heard about her marriage. Yi Zhongjue's appearance would shut their mouths once and for all. You should dot return dot to work. I'll go lie down for a bit. I'm feeling a bit unwell, Mo Suqing gave him a half smile. Okay. Yi Zhongjue watched dot her enter dot the bedroom dot before turning back to his desk. The morning seemed to pass in a wink. Dot near noon, Mo Suqing's phone rang. She had hardly fallen asleep when she was woken completely. She glanced at the caller ID. Yao. She picked it up and said, Hey, Yao. What's up? Finally. You are answering the phone. Mo Suqing's voice was hoarse with sleep. What do you mean, finally? I was almost killed by my period yesterday. That's why I overslept. Leng Xiao immediately changed her tone, now it was full of concern, are you all right? Mo Suqing smiled. After the first day, I'm feeling much better. So, why did you call? You tell me, said Leng Xiao. She suddenly sounded annoyed, I thought you went to the airport to take some pictures of Guan Zixuan yesterday. But why didn't I read about something more exciting today? Mo Suqing gave a hollow laugh. 
She didn't know if it was a good idea to tell Leng Xiao the truth, so she resorted to lying. I didn't see Guan Zixuan yesterday. Really? You are not lying, are you? demanded Leng Xiao without raising her voice. I'm not. Mo Suqing lied unabashedly. But why didn't you see him when Bai Tingnan did? exclaimed Leng Xiao exasperated, like a master whose apprentice had made an elementary mistake. Her story is on the front page today. Actor Guan Zixuan and secret lover caught in a restroom. Didn't you go to the airport yesterday afternoon? Mo Suqing was struck with astonishment, feeling sick in her stomach. Wait. What did you just say? Are you sure the headline in the entertainment section today is actor Guan Zixuan and secret lover caught in a restroom she couldn't believe it? What? She was certain she was the only person who had bumped into Guan Zixuan in the restroom yesterday. I'm sure. Leng Xiao said fiercely. In order to obtain this key piece of information regarding Guan Zixuan's arrival, she had almost made a humiliating deal with her uncle. Do you know that I almost knelt before my uncle and begged him to divulge the information? He finally gave it to me and I thought it was without doubt we would get the front page. But now, that bitch by Ting Nan beat us to it. How am I supposed to swallow it? Mo Suqing had known that the sources Leng Xiao had always seemed to come from that resourceful uncle of hers. But, how was Bai Ting Nan able to write a story about it? She had been in the office all day long yesterday. Are you sure it is Bai Ting Nan who wrote the story? She didn't even leave the office at all at work yesterday. It is her, said Leng Xiao bitterly. You have no idea how everyone is praising her now. They say she has such good connections that even if she doesn't go anywhere, breaking news will come to her, that she knows everything, blah dot blah dot blah. I am so disgusted seeing her strutting like a peacock all morning. Mo Suqing held her phone with one hand and switched on her tablet with the other. Wait, let me check out the entertainment section first. Okay. See with your own eyes, said Leng Xiao resignedly. Mo Suqing clicked open the front page of the entertainment news and was immediately assaulted with scandal after scandal, all about the superstar and his mysterious girlfriend in a restroom. They were extremely saucy. Then, Mo Suqing looked for the headline of trend. Sure enough, there was a photo of Guan Zixuan and that girl. It stated that Bai Ting Nan of Trend Magazine was the first one who had published it. Mo Suqing was utterly dumbstruck. That's the same photo I took with my phone. How on earth did Bai Ting Nan get dot hold of it? Well. Did you see it? Why don't you say something, prompted Ling Xiao. Mo Suqing came back to reality and replied, yeah, I saw it. She didn't know how to describe her feelings now. One thing was certain. Guan Zixuan was definitely cursing her. But, it wasn't her. Mo Suqing didn't know how to explain everything to Ling Xiao. She paused and put her thoughts in order before recounting what had happened the previous afternoon. So, this is what happened. I promised Guan Zixuan I wouldn't tell anyone about it. I also told him that I am just an ordinary traveler instead of a gossip columnist. Moreover, he gave his jacket to me, which is really kind. I did not expect this at all. If I knew the photo would end up there, I may as well have written the story myself. Why did I spend the rest of the afternoon enduring the goddamn pain, only to come up with a piece of crap? Grr. Leng Xiao had been listening quietly. After a while, she spoke, so you were saying that the photo by Ting Nan published is actually from your phone and that she stayed in the office all day long yesterday, so you have no idea how she could possibly get hold of any photos of the like. She paused before adding, do you think she can have installed some kind of monitoring software in your phone? Otherwise, how can she have the photo? Leng Xiao frowned in perplexity. Mo Suqing thought about what she had said and replied, I don't think so. We don't mingle with each other, so it is impossible that she could touch my phone, much less install anything in it. God, no one will believe it if I tell them the truth. Give me a little more time. 
I think I might know what happened. M.O. Suching retraced in her head everything that had happened yesterday one more time. You know what happened. Well, tell me, pressed Leng Xiao. I am dying to know how the news that is supposed to be ours ended up in the hand of that bitch. God, I'm so mad. If I ever know how she did it, I swear I'll cut her treacherous hand off. Chapter 26 A Good Man Who Cooks You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. M.O. Suching sighed. Forget it, Yao. Stop fuming, dot she dot soothed. After all, it all boils down to my own carelessness. If there's anyone you should blame, it's me. She explained, when I returned to the office yesterday afternoon, my menstrual cramps hurt so much that I directly ran to the restroom, dropping my phone and camera on my desk on the way. When I got back, I didn't find anything out of the ordinary. But, I did notice that Bai Ting Nan, who is usually the first to leave work, was the last one to go yesterday. When I left, she was still writing her story. That must be E.I.T. exclaimed Lin Xiao. She must have stolen your picture from your phone while you were in the restroom. But I have to say, you are too honest. I can't believe you really kept your promise and didn't publish the story. Now Guan Zixuan must think it was you who did it, even though it was not the truth. M.O. Suqing gave out a bitter laugh. That was true. Even though she did not publish the photo, Guan Zixuan would definitely think the opposite. She shrugged and said calmly, it's fine. Guan Zixuan doesn't know who I am anyway. We will be more careful next time. The same mistake must not be made a second time. All right then, sighed Leng Xiao, dispirited. We must watch out for Bai Ting Nan from now on. There's nothing she dares not do. Okay. I got it, nodded Mo Suqing. After hanging up, Mo Suqing sat on the bed and was lost in thought. She was glad Guan Zixuan did not know who she was. However, little did she know that their fates had already been bound together. All because of one picture. Guan Zixuan had just got back to the country yesterday, so he was naturally exhausted. The mishap with that girl at the airport did not help, either. Therefore, after he went home, he had hit the mute button and gone to sleep, hoping to sleep off the jet lag. As a result, it was past eleven when he woke the next day. He stretched himself with a yawn, then reached over for his phone on the nightstand. He was surprised to find hundreds of missed calls. His phone had been bombarded without him knowing. Shocked, he did not come to himself for a long moment. What could have happened that resulted in so many missed calls overnight? After calming down a little, Guan Zixuan called Yuan. Yuan was a young man who had worked for him for three years. A very reliable fella. But when he picked up the phone, he sounded as if he was about to lose it. Boss, I finally reached you, he whined. I am so desperate. Calm down now, said Guan Zixuan coolly. Just tell me what happened, slowly. Yuan did not have much patience, he quickly spat everything out. Yesterday, you deleted everything in the girl's camera, right? Guess what, your picture appears in the news today. My phone had been heavily bombarded all morning. The entire PR team is as busy as bees. Guan Zixuan's expression darkened. Should have known not to trust that that woman. How dared she publish the picture? And how could I have not known she is such a person? Fine. Now you really provoke me. You will pay the price. Identify the magazine or newspaper that first published the story for me. I have already done that, said Yuan feebly. It's Trend Magazine. In fact, it is their exclusive news. The first person who published it is a female gossip columnist named Bai Ting Nan. A gossip columnist, murmured Guan Zixuan, mulling over the name. After a while, his face creased into a profound smile. Issue an official announcement, telling the public that I will give everyone a satisfactory explanation regarding me and my mysterious girlfriend. That should be enough to improve the situation. 
Then, hold a press conference but only invite the gossip columnists from Trend. Boss, are you sure, frowned Yuan. Aren't you going to offend the other media? They will probably scandalize you. Guan Zixuan chuckled and said, that's quite all right. With my position in the business, few people can cause me any harm. I would like to see if Bai Ting Nan is the woman from yesterday. It will be a lot of fun if she is. Humph. She was so sincere when she told me she was not a gossip columnist. I would like to know if she can still keep up her brazen attitude when we meet again. Yuan considered this for a moment. Okay, boss. I'm going to do everything you just said now. I can arrange and hold the press conference tomorrow. What do you think? Perfect, approved Guan Zixuan in an emphatic tone, his smile expanding into a grin. He looked forward to meeting that woman again. O.org Mo Suching sat on the bed for a long time. She still felt a little concerned. After all, she and Guan Zixuan both worked in the entertainment field. He was an actor and she was a gossip columnist. If he really wanted to locate her, there was no way he could not do it. But, he wouldn't spend time on her, now would he? But the bottom line was, she was not even the one who had published the news, so she really shouldn't feel guilty. Thus boosting her morale, M.O. Suching found that there was nothing to be worried about. Worst comes to worst, she would worry about it when the situation demanded her to be. All of a sudden, her hunger took over. She consulted her phone and found that it was already noon. It was time for lunch. She stepped out of the room and heard Dari dot spatula hitting dot the dot pan. She walked to the kitchen. Through the glass panel, she could see Yi Zhongjue preparing lunch in a gray apron. He had a serene look on his face, chopping and pouring ingredients into the pan, just like a professional chef. Mo Suching was amazed. He can cook. It seemed that there was nothing he couldn't do. She noted that there was a difference between the cooking Yi Zhongjue and the working one. He had a homey and cozy halo about him right then. When he was focusing on a task, he was very serious and meticulous. Nothing else concerned him anymore, he just worked, wholeheartedly. A curious sensation swelled in her. She played back all of their interactions so far and what he was like dot on dot each occasion. The Yi Zhongjue when she had first met him, the Yi Zhongjue whom she had gone to register the marriage with, the Yi Zhongjue who had taken her to dinner on their first evening as a couple, the Yi Zhongjue who worked hard, the Yi Zhongjue who took care of her during her period, and finally, the Yi Zhongjue who cooked for her. It was so strange. They had known each other for only a couple of days, but somehow he seemed to have been in her life forever. He was really a very nice man. She had never thought she would be so lucky as to find someone who not only worked hard, but also took good care of her and cooked great food. She had thought there was no way to find a man like this, but somehow she had bumped into one. Mo Suching was still deep in thought when Yi Zhongjue finished cooking and started serving the food. He looked at her standing there and spoke softly, don't just stand there like a tree. Go wash your hands. I have only one more dish to stir dot fry before we can have lunch. Brought out of her reverie, M.O. Suching found two plates, each of which was covered neatly by a china bowl, already on the table. She nodded rapidly and said stupidly, Oh. I'm going. Yi Zhongjue smiled at her words and went into the kitchen. After washing her hands, M.O. Suching walked to the dining area and found that Yi Zhongjue had served the last dish. He was back in the kitchen to get the rice. M.O. Suching watched him for a moment, her eyes twinkling, and then went to the cabinet for their bowls. Yi Zhongjue gave her a thoughtful glance. She smiled innocently. The two of them sat down for lunch. M.O. Suching tasted one of the dishes and closed her eyes. Yum! She exclaimed. It was as if some switch on her had been turned on. She was no longer acting warily like before. Like a greedy child, she kept stuffing food into her mouth. Yi Zhongjue, you don't look it, but you surely can cook, she commented with her mouth full. 
Well, yeah, he said flatly. He ate in a very graceful manner. During the meal, he was even quieter than usual, which Mo Suqing found comfortable and nice. Mo Suqing had another bite and asked Yi Zhongjue, when did you learn how to cook? Yi Zhongjue thought about it and replied, I think it was when I was in college. I was studying .abroad.at that time and could never get used to the foreign food, so I cooked for myself. After some time, I had most of the basic dishes under my belt. Mo Suqing looked at him in admiration, but her mouth never stopped. Wow, you are good. I have always wanted to learn to cook. But so far, the only dish I can make is tomato and chili stir. Fry, I invented it myself, ah. Looking at her eat, Yi Zhongjue smiled. She is so cute. Mo Suqing looked up and caught him grinning. She was surprised. After a while, she spoke in a timid and amazed tone, You just smiled. Yi Zhongjue raised his eyebrow and demanded, What, I can't smile? Yes, I like how you look when you dot smile. Mo Suqing said admiringly and a little affectionately. I thought your only expression was that cold face, other than no expression at all. I dot didn't think you could dot smile. Yi Zhongjue grunted noncommittally. He did not expect that her to dot say that. After a while, he spoke deliberately, as if he had been mulling over what Mo Suqing had just commented, that cold face. Am I really as intimidating as you dot say I am? Mo Suqing pushed some rice into her mouth before looking up, did no one ever tell you that you never smiled? Yi Zhongjue frowned and thought about this. She's right. No one seems to have mentioned anything about it to me. Maybe they all think I am insensitive and cold, but they dare not say so. I think they dare not tell me about it, Mo Suqing was a little taken aback at his words. I can understand she agreed eventually. Chapter 27, What a Dictatorial Boss You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. The way she saw it, if a person wore a cold face all the time, people around him would subconsciously give him a wide berth and be fearful of him. Normally, you would assume that cold-faced people were difficult. However, today she found that Yi Zhongjue was an exception. He was icy on the dot outside, fiery on the dot inside. At least that this was how he always treated her since they had known each other. Eat your lunch and stop thinking weird stuff, sighed Yi Zhongjue when he saw that Mo Suqing that was dot once again lost in thought. Oh dot okay, Mo Suqing stuck out her tongue. But just when she was about to resume her meal, her phone rang from the bedroom. Yi Zhongjue frowned, despite taking the day off, she dot seemed to be busier than him with all those calls. He had heard her talking on the phone while he was preparing lunch. Mo Suqing laughed hollowly and apologized, sorry. I need to answer the phone. Yi Zhongjue nodded without saying a word. Mo Suqing stood up and walked into the room. Seeing that it was Leng Xiao who was calling, she picked up the phone. Suqing, I have some bad news, panted Leng Xiao. What? What happened? Take it easy, said Mo Suqing. Just now, Abbas Miju announced that Guan Zixuan is going to hold a press conference tomorrow and that he asked only journalists at Trend to attend, reported an agitated Leng Xiao. Is it possible he's actually trying to locate you, using the conference as a disguise? No way, exclaimed Mo Suqing incredulously. It was as plain as the nose on her face that Guan Zixuan was indeed trying to locate and confront her. Well, you take care then. Although Ling Xiao was giving her a warning, she sounded amused, as if taking pleasure in her misfortune. I don't believe it. Is he really such a petty man, mourned Mo Suqing. He has a million scandals every day. Why would he want to hunt me down? I'm just someone who accidentally bumped into him and took a picture, which, may I add, I did not publish. Ling Xiao laughed before saying, of course he would. The picture was taken in a public toilet. You have totally ruined his sacred image for his fans. Why wouldn't he want to hunt you down? So what that should that I do, fretted Mo Suqing. Don't worry. 
just don't go to the conference. However, Abbas Miju ordered by Ting Nan, Song Min, Lu Siren, you and me to be there, so you've got to think of some excuse. Mo Suqing hung up the phone, looking sorry for herself. She sat on the edge of the bed and racked her brains but to no avail. If she still couldn't come up with anything, she could call in sick again tomorrow. However, the idea was barely formed before being aborted as soon as she thought of the icy expression on Abbas Miju's face. She had been taking so many days off recently that she wasn't sure if she had used up her quota for the year. Abbas Miju must have been pissed off. M.O. Suqing's countenance kept changing. All of a sudden, she felt a pair of eyes watching her intently. Snapping her head up, she saw Yi Zhongjue leaning against the doorframe, looking at her expressionlessly. Seeing that Mo Suqing was aware of his presence, he spoke in a placid tone without any annoyance detectable, do you want to have your meal? Mo Suqing thought, I still have to figure out what to do, but I'll do it after eating something first. Otherwise, I won't have enough energy to deal with Abbas Miju tomorrow. Yes. She dot answered emphatically. Yi Zhongjue was a little taken aback. In the afternoon, Yi Zhongjue was working on some papers in his study. Mo Suqing knew she would probably sleep all afternoon if she stayed in her room, so she went to find Yi Zhongjue instead. There were just the two of them in the house, they could use each other's company. Yi Zhongjue looked up on hearing her footsteps. Mo Suqing stood by the door with a book in her hand, looking somewhat embarrassed. Come in. He said. M.O. Suqing beamed. I promise I won't disturb you. I just don't want to be alone. Sure, replied Yi Zhongjue noncommittally before returning back to the papers. M.O. Suqing silently walked over to the sofa across from the desk. For a while, the study was very quiet except for the occasional tapping on the keyboard from Yi Zhongjue, the swishing of his signing some paper, and the rustling of her turning another page. It must be what people meant by, quiet but not lonely. What Mo Suqing had not expected was, she would still fall asleep reading on the sofa. When Yi Zhongjue looked up again, he found that she had fallen into a peaceful sleep like a child. Her face was very beautiful, and her expression meek. He frowned a little. She was susceptible to colds these few days, but it seemed she wasn't concerned at all by falling asleep there. What if she catches a chill? He walked out of the study immediately. When he came back, there was a thick duvet in his arms. He walked over and cautiously covered her body with the duvet, afraid to wake her. Mo Suqing slept soundly until well past five in the afternoon. Yi Zhongjue was still working when she opened her eyes. Did you do this? asked her in a very nasal voice, pointing at the duvet. Yeah, said Yi Zhongjue. Mo Suqing shut her mouth, embarrassed. She had a feeling he didn't want to talk to her. After sitting on the sofa for a while, she spoke tentatively, you seem to have more work than your boss does. Do you really have to handle all those papers? asked Mo Suqing, pointing at the huge pile on the desk. Yi Zhongjue stopped in mid-signing. Yeah, I am supposed to be an assistant. An assistant is not supposed to read so many papers, let alone sign them after formulating a quick response, he replied, of course not. It's just my boss has been on a business trip these two days. He asked me to go over these papers and sign them for him, so things can get done without delay. What a dictatorial and willful boss. M.O. Suqing huffed. Yi Zhongjue did not want Mo Suqing to suspect anything, so he quickly explained, no, I have worked at Mighty Empire for several years, so my boss has a lot of trust in me. Mo Suqing frowned. She could feel something didn't quite add up. However, Yi Zhongjue sounded really genuine. Maybe everything was just as he said. All right then. What do you want to have for dinner? I'll go and buy it. Yi Zhongjue contemplated for a moment before replying, how about we order takeout? Or, I can take you out for dinner. Remembering the last time when he took her out for a meal that could well have cost him his salary for a month, Mo Suqing shook her head rapidly. 
No, no. Let's order takeout. Okay. I'll work for a little longer while waiting for the takeout. Mo Suching nodded, okay, go back to your work. Having nothing left to say, she took the juve and left the study. Watching her slender figure from behind with a deep affection, Yi Zhongjue became lost in thought. One day, she would find out the truth. If she discovered he had been lying to her now when she didn't have any feelings for him, she would definitely leave him. But, he couldn't just lie to her forever. I'll hide the truth from her for as long as I can then. He sighed. The next morning when Emo Suqing woke up, Yi Zhongjue was still sleeping. She remembered that he had continued to work into the night the previous day. It must have been pretty late when he went to bed. She had never known anyone who was as diligent and careful in work as Dot him. He was second to none when it comes to work ethics. Having said that, she believed his thoroughness was not reserved for work. He seemed to be exhausted. I'll let him sleep a little more. Mo Suqing carefully got out of bed, fearing she would wake him up. When she emerged from the bathroom, Yi Zhongjue was already up. He had just got finished changing Dot and Dot asked, Why didn't you wake me? Mo Suqing walked over to the wardrobe to pick out some clothes while saying casually, You went to bed late last night, so I thought you could use a few more minutes out of Dot's sleep. Right, Yi Zhongjue murmured, then stepped into the bathroom. Mo Suqing quickly changed into her work outfit. When Yi Zhongjue came out of the bathroom, she had packed everything and was going to buy some breakfast downstairs. Yi Zhongjue stopped her, where are you going? L.R.G. Mo Suqing looked at him and replied matter. Of dot factly, I'm going to buy us some breakfast. Yi Zhongjue took a look at his watch and observed, it's a bit late. We'll buy some breakfast on the way to work. Don't forget your purse. Let's go. What? Mo Suqing remained rooted on the spot. Yi Zhongjue reminded her, I said I would drive you to work and pick you up from work from now on. Remembering the conversation from yesterday, Mo Suqing was a little dumbfounded. We can start from tomorrow. It's too late today, you'll be late for work. Yi Zhongjue shook his head, No I won't. Get your stuff and let's go. Mo Suqing decided that she was just wasting more time arguing with him, so she quickly took up her purse and followed him downstairs. Sitting in the car, Mo Suqing finally understood why a lot of people would want to buy a car. It was so much better than being crammed into a subway carriage. When she graduated from school, Mo Zhenfeng had proposed to buy her a car, but due to many reasons, including the discord between Bai Lian and her, her stubbornness, and her decision to leave home, she didn't accept it. However, the real reason was because she didn't know how to drive, the thought that of driving on the road scared her. The fact that her mother had died from a car accident did not help. Yi Zhongjue pulled over without warning. Mo Suqing gave him a puzzled look. He turned to her and instructed, wait here. I'll go buy some breakfast. Then, he got off the car and walked toward a shop nearby. He was such a nice dot looking man, tall and handsome and elegant. People immediately started to eye him. A weird emotion raised up in Mo Suqing's chest. At least nominally, he was her husband. Although he was just an assistant, she had discovered during their short time together that he was not only extraordinarily attractive, but also very abled in many things. But why would he choose me? And more importantly, why? Did that I succumb to an impulse and agree to marry him? Chapter 28 Mo Suqing got out of a predicament you are listening at novel full dot audio. Mo Suqing stayed in the car, her expression changing from one to another. Presently, Yi Zhongjue returned to the car. He handed her the breakfast, saying, Eat first. We'll arrive at your company soon. Mo Suqing nodded and took the food. When they arrived at Trend, she was a full half hour earlier. She got off the car and spotted Zhang Yubin standing near the entrance, watching her. Mo Suqing paid no heed of his behavior. She watched Yi Zhongjue drive away before turning to enter the office. When she walked past Zhang Yubin, 
he spoke, that your husband. His voice was obviously steeped in jealousy. M.O. Suching frowned, how does it concern him? Ah, uh, dot ha, huh, she replied noncommittally and was about to keep walking. However, it seemed Zhang Yubin wasn't quite finished. He followed behind Mo Suching and continued, Suching, why did you choose someone like that? He's worse than that Gu Jianan. At least Gu Jianan is the successor to the Gu group. What is this husband of yours? He can't even buy a decent car. I don't believe a man who drives dot around in a Volkswagen is able to take good care of you. Zhang Yubin became more and more worked up with each word. It was as if Mo Suching had done something evil. Mo Suching seriously didn't want to lose her temper. She was just being polite, otherwise she wouldn't have answered his question. She knew that Zhang Yubin's family owned a company and that he had some powerful connections here in A. City. But even so, he didn't get to have the brass to criticize who she chose. I don't believe it's any of your business, said Mo Suching calmly with a look that betrayed a flicker of annoyance. Zhang Yubin blushed scarlet at her words. It was difficult to tell if it was because he was angry or embarrassed. Looking nonplussed, he stood there for a while and, when Mo Suching almost disappeared into the office, shouted helplessly, Suching, one day you will regret. Choosing. Him, Mo Suching repeated herself once again without turning her head, yeah. It's still not your business. Deflated, Zhang Yubin remained on the spot for a long time. Some ten minutes after Mo Suching stepped into the office, Leng Xiao showed up. The two girls went to the bathroom. Leng Xiao fired a question at Mo Suching right away, have you thought of anything yet? Mo Suching did not answer for a short while before replying, kind of. Except I don't know whether it is feasible or not. It's a little embarrassing, what did you think of? Tell me about it. Leng Xiao moved closer to her eagerly. Mo Suching pushed her away in disgust. The lass always took pleasure in her misfortune. It's simple. When you called in sick for me yesterday, you mentioned to Abbas Miju I was unwell, right? It was not the first time I was unwell during my period, I bet she knew what happened. So, here's my plan, this time, Mo Suching leaned across to whisper her whole plan into Leng Xiao's ear. Leng Xiao trembled uncontrollably, trying hard to suppress her laughter. However, she failed and started to laugh out loud. Mo Suching rolled her eyes. I knew you would laugh at me. Just tell me what you think of the plan. Leng Xiao gave her the thumbs up. Using an existing strategy, very good. No, I should acknowledge that you didn't mean to play the menstruation card yesterday. It was an accident. However, Guan Zixuan revealed his weapon now, and you have your countermeasure in store for him. What a brilliant idea. Mo Suching entered one of the cubicles and came out again shortly afterwards. When the two of them appeared from the bathroom, most of the journalists had come. At 10 o'clock, and Huelan emerged from her private office and spoke to the journalists of the entertainment department, for those who have been appointed to interview Guan Zixuan today, go straight to the 10th floor of Tianyu Hotel, where the press conference is going to be held at 11 sharp. After finishing what she had got to say, and Huelan went back to her office. Mo Suching gave Leng Xiao a meaningful look, then stood up slowly. Just as expected, there was a big stain on the black leather seat of her chair. She let out a sigh of relief. Covering her backside with a folder, she thus walked towards the editor. In. Chief's office with a strange gait. People cast her one or two sidelong glances without commenting. Mo Suching knocked, waited for Anhuelan's admittance, and pushed open the door. Anhuelan looked up and said in a voice as cold as her face, What's up? Aren't you supposed to be getting ready for the conference? Mo Suching looked at her and said timidly, Boss, can I not go to the conference? And Huelan, her face now expressionless, demanded, Why is that? The corner of Mo Suching's mouth twitched. She turned around. And Huelan immediately saw the scarlet stain on her khaki trousers. As a woman, of course she knew what had happened. 
She looked a bit uneasy when she admonished Emo Suching, what a careless girl. Emo Suching turned back and smiled embarrassingly. The pad must have gone ask you. Whatever, and Huelin waved her hand impatiently. Go clean yourself up. You can stay in the company today. I have sent enough people. It's okay if one of you doesn't go. Thank you, boss. Smiling, Amo Suching nodded and placed the folder back on her hips before leaving the office. The second Amo Suching emerged from the editor.in.chief's office, she ran back to her desk. She fished out a thin jacket from her purse and put it on. Then, she turned to Leng Xiao and gave her a, it worked, look before walking towards the bathroom with a piece of sanitary pad in her hand. So, the entire plan she had carried out was this. When she entered the cubicle before, she was actually throwing away the old pad on her underwear, so that blood would stain her clothing and she would have a wonderful excuse not to go to the press conference. It was a cheap trick, but it definitely worked like a charm. And Huelin did not even hesitate a moment. In order not to go to the conference and confront Guan Zixuan, she was more than willing to sacrifice a pair of trousers. When Emo Suqing came out of the bathroom, Lin Xiao and the others had left for Tianyu Hotel. Emo Suqing breathed a sigh of relief. She walked over to her desk and sat down. Phew. It was a close call. At Tianyu Hotel Guan Zixuan was sitting in the monitor room, watching intently at the screen. After a while, he knitted his brows. Where is the woman from yesterday? Is she really not a gossip columnist? He turned to ask his assistant, have all of the gossip columnists from Trend Magazine arrived? Yes, they are all here, confirmed Yuan. Tell me which one of them is the first one who published my news yesterday. Yuan leaned in to take a closer look at the screen. Finally, he pointed at a woman in white and said, that is by Ting Nan. I've already done some research on her. She stayed in the office all day long yesterday, not stepping her foot outside at all until it was time to go home. Guan Zixuan's face darkened. Did he make a misjudgment? Was it possible that the woman simply sent the photo to the magazine, that she was not a gossip columnist? If so, she would be like a needle in a haystack. Guan Zixuan's expression became uglier and uglier. He just sat there, not moving at all. Yuan looked at him worriedly, boss, it's time, dot Guan Zixuan ignored him completely. Yuan was obviously agitated. Come on now. Don't be such a baby. It is your conference. You can't just decide not. Two. Show up. An idea presented itself. He suggested, we can intercept by Ting Nan after the conference and ask her where she got hold of the picture. I believe we can definitely locate that woman from yesterday this way, so, boss, please stop fuming. We need to go there now. If you are late, those gossip columnists will only have more material to scandalize you. Guan Zixuan slowly turned around and looked at him, rolling his eyes upward as if he was considering Yuan's proposal. I guess you have a point. Well, then you will bring Bai Ting Nan to me after this, okay? Hearing that he had finally relented, Yuan almost cried. Yes sir. I will do as told. At his words, Guan Zixuan, like a prince, slowly rose and left the monitor room. At the conference. Guan Zixuan stepped into the spotlight in his graceful white suit. When he smiled, every fan was dot intoxicated by dot him. Journalists, my dear fans, and everyone who is present here today, welcome. About yesterday's news, I will give you clear and satisfactory answers. Now, you may start asking questions. By Ting Nan took the lead, Mr. Guan, what is your relationship with the woman in the airport bathroom? Is she your mysterious girlfriend? Guan Zixuan was smiling on the outside, but inside his temper was flaring. He imagined cutting Mo Suqing into pieces. I don't believe that woman from yesterday didn't divulge what she saw. Very well. If this is how she's gonna play the game, I'll play along. 
His voice was very sexy when he answered, as a matter of fact, we just met yesterday, she's not my girlfriend. Your imagination is overactive, dot everyone. By Ting Nan threw another question right away, pointing out, if you just met each other, how come you two would end up in the same bathroom? It doesn't make any sense to me. Guan Zixuan cleared his throat and said, a creepy smile crossing his face, you are right. There are times when things don't seem to make any sense yet in fact make perfect sense. He smiled and continued, yesterday after I entered the bathroom, the door to it was opened again. I turned around and saw a woman charging inside. That woman was who you thought of as my mysterious girlfriend, while the fact is I only met her for the first time. So she ran inside, saw me, and found that she had gone into the wrong bathroom. Obviously dot in dot panic, she looked at me and froze on the spot for a while, not knowing what to do. In the end, she spoke to me. Does anyone care to know what she said? I'm so sorry I went into the wrong bathroom, someone shouted a guess. My God. You are Guan Zixuan. I can't believe I met you in person. You are so handsome, another offered. Chapter 29, Guan Zixuan got out of a crisis you are listening at novel full dot audio. Guan Zixuan shook his head and wagged his finger from side to side. No, he smiled mysteriously and said, neither is what she said. The truth is, she knew she was in the wrong bathroom the moment she saw me, but she couldn't just go back outside due to some reason dot out of her control. Which is, asked someone almost instantly. Well, Guan Zixuan dragged the answer out, the reason is simple. It was her period. She got her trousers stained and charged into the wrong bathroom in her haste. However, she didn't want to leave the bathroom again until she cleaned herself up. Leng Xiao burst into laughter at his account. Guan Zixuan was using the story of how he had met Su Qing. When Su Qing found out that he brazenly spoke of her embarrassing experience in front of the public, she would definitely kill him. Guan Zixuan's expression made a subtle change. He looked at Leng Xiao and asked, Miss, what is it that is so funny? Leng Xiao quickly shut her mouth up. She shouldn't have acted so. No, nothing, she replied, I just find it very hilarious. It was already not her day when she didn't prepare for her period, but to go into the wrong bathroom on top of that. Talk about bad luck. Indeed, chuckled Guan Zixuan, not inappropriately. However, she was actually quite lucky in the end, because she met me. How is that? asked Lu Siren. Guan Zixuan smiled without answering the question immediately. His smile was so sweet that it was intoxicating. After a while, he finally said, she was lucky because I went out of my way to buy some sanitary pads for her. This is who I am. I just can't walk away when someone is in need. Seeing that she was so helpless made my heart fill with pity, so when she asked me if I could get some sanitary pads for her, I said yes without hesitation. After all, giving each other a hand is one of our greatest traditions as the Chinese people. Wow, exclaimed the crowd. Guan Zixuan is so cool. What a gentleman he is, Bai Tingnan frowned. Is this really what happened? Puzzled, she asked, and then what happened? Guan Zixuan sneered inwardly. By her insistent questioning, he was sure she knew something. But outwardly, he just smiled an innocent smile and replied, and then, I lent her my jacket to cover the stain and left the bathroom. Now it was Leng Xiao's turn. She asked the following question on purpose, so according to your story, it's true she's not your girlfriend. But what I don't understand is dot how dot can dot anyone take a picture dot secretly dot I in such a private place. Guan Zixuan's smile broadened into a beam. He said, well, how about you tell me that? After all, gossip columnists nowadays are so determined to get saucy stories that there is virtually nothing they can't do. Besides, it is old news that scandals can always find celebrities, then, he chuckled a little and joked, I will have to be extra careful when I go to the bathroom from now on. Guan Zixuan thus concluded the conference with a pregnant statement. 
Leng Xia was forced to admit that although Guan Zixuan's was also a cheap trick, he surely knew how to play it skillfully. It was killing two birds with one stone on his part. Not only did he make people believe that he was not related to the woman in any way, but he also successfully expressed what a kind gentleman he was and gained more popularity. As someone who also worked in the entertainment industry, Leng Xiao sincerely admired his strategy. No wonder he could take off in the first place and became famous. It wasn't simply because he got a brilliant PR team. He himself was not bad, either. After the conference, Leng Xiao and the others left the hotel. Except by Ting Nan, who was always a lone wolf and not well dot liked. She was the last one to go. She still didn't understand it. Could it really be that Mo Suqing took the picture in secret while she hid in the men's room in ambush? If that was the case, it definitely said a lot about her. Bai Ting Nan was about to enter the elevator when a young man blocked her path. She gave him a bewildered look and demanded, What do you want? Yuan smiled and explained, Hi, you can call me Yuan. I am Mr. Guan's personal assistant. He would like to talk to you. Bai Ting Nan thought, Mr. Guan. I suppose he means Guan Zixuan. Why does he want to talk to me? Bai Ting Nan's face brightened. As one of his fans, she had always admired Guan Zixuan. She would never have dreamed of Guan Zixuan wanting to see her in private. No matter why he was doing this, it was a once.in.a.lifetime opportunity that she could never say no to. She nodded, barely containing her happiness. Okay. I'll go with you. Yuan brought by Ting Nan to a lounge and said, Mr. Guan is in there. Please go inside. I'll wait here. Bai Ting Nan nodded and opened the door expectantly. She was struck dumb the moment she set foot inside the lounge, which was in a complete darkness. Not afar, there seemed to be a darker shadow. The creepy atmosphere lasted for about a minute. Bai Ting Nan was a little scared and considered to turn around and leave, but thinking of meeting and talking with Guan Zixuan, she decided against it. She found her voice and asked hesitantly, Are you Guan Zixuan? The figure in the dark answered softly, Uh, dot huh. The voice was husky and sexy, just like Guan Zixuan's. Bai Ting Nan gave out a sigh of relief. Your assistant Yuan said you would like to see me. Guan Zixuan chuckled softly, still in the dark. When he spoke again, his voice seemed to acquire some magic power, you weren't the one who took the pictures yesterday, right? Bai Ting Nan was astounded did he find out. She racked her brain and, after a while, replied hastily, I received an anonymous message that contained the picture that that's dot all I know. The way Bai Ting Nan blurted out her words made Guan Zixuan frown. He didn't believe a word of hers, but she said with such a seeming conviction, he didn't know how to continue his questioning. After a while, he prodded, Are you sure? Bai Ting Nan saw that Guan Zixuan, standing up from a sofa, started to walk towards her. There was a tremor in her voice, why dot yes. When Guan Zixuan was right in front of her, she didn't feel like herself anymore. Her heart was pounding so loudly. Guan Zixuan sneered inwardly. With such an easily lost composure, how dared she lie to me? Guan Zixuan stepped closer and closer. Bai Ting Nan could not help but go backwards. In the end, she reached the wall and there was nowhere else she could go. Guan Zixuan leaned in, the warmth of his breath on Bai Ting Nan's face. Her heart pounded even harder, she was both scared and expectant. Guan Zixuan's voice was ever husky and sexy when he asked again, Are you sure you are telling the truth? In her mind's eye, Bai Ting Nan saw herself stealing the picture from Mo Suqing's cell phone yesterday afternoon. She gathered up her determination once again. She could not let anyone know about it. I that I'm sure, she stammered out an answer. Guan Zixuan pulled himself away from her. Bai Ting Nan could breathe again. He suddenly lost his interest. This woman was plain hypocritical. So boring and unattractive. Go, commanded Guan Zixuan, his voice cold and steely all of a sudden. 
What? Bai Tingnan was totally stunned. He was just being sweet and charming. How did he change into another person in a matter of seconds? What? You don't understand English. I said go. Shamed, Bai Tingnan ran out of the door. By Bai Tingnan's grieved expression, Yuan knew that his boss had once again mistreated another young woman. When he opened the door, Guan Zixuan had turned the light on. Boss, are we still going to find out about that woman from yesterday? Forget about it, said Guan Zixuan, waving his hand dismissively. Don't bother. You can go now. I'm going to take a rest. Guan Zixuan rubbed his forehead, feeling sore and hurt around the temple. As soon as Leng Xia went back to the office, Mo Suqing demanded to know what had happened at the conference. The two of them went to have lunch together. Leng Xiao did not even start talking when she burst out laughing uncontrollably. What is it? Talk to me. Mo Suqing became even more anxious. However, every time Leng Xiao looked at Mo Suqing in the eye, a new round of laughter ensued. Her shoulders shook violently, she almost burst into tears. Ha ha ha. Su Qing, when Guan Zixuan talked about the woman he was with yesterday, he was actually talking about you. He used you to clear up his scandal, saying that he bought some sanitary pads for the woman, etc. You have no idea. He told the story with such a conviction. I could not help but laugh out loud then and there. What, M.O. Su Qing was completely shocked. He told everyone her embarrassing experience. What a petty man. As a famous actor, how could he give such an account in public? He was over the top, that man was. Seeing M.O. Su Qing cover her face with one hand, not knowing what to say, Leng Xiao's laughter became more hearty. M.O. Su Qing facebombed, wishing she was not Leng Xiao's friend right then. They laughed and joked like this for the rest of lunchtime and Mo Suqing gradually relaxed. Anyway, Guan Zixuan should be satisfied now and stop looking for her. Besides, she didn't even publish the picture. That was the bottom line. After lunch, Mo Suqing and Leng Xiao went back to the company. They had barely sat down when An Huilin walked into the office. She gave Leng Xiao a haughty look. Even Mo Suqing could feel her hostility that even though the look was not directed to her. After An Huilin returned to her office, Mo Suqing turned to Leng Xiao and said, Recently, I always have the feeling that you have somehow provoked her anger. Otherwise, why does she keep treating you like this? Even I can feel it. And the look she gives you. Who knows why, said Leng Xiao carelessly. I guess she's about to lose her mind because she is still an old maid and no one wants to sleep with her. She wants to vent her discontent on someone and I just happen to be her target. That's all. Leng Xiao chuckled derisively. Mo Suqing didn't know how to respond. Of course, she knew Leng Xiao was just kidding. However, she still couldn't figure out the real reason why An Huilin would treat Leng Xiao like that. Chapter 30 Gu Jianan appeared in Mighty Empire you are listening at novelfull.audio. In the Mighty Empire HQ. Gu Jianan was in front of the building and tried to get in. However, the security didn't think so. Sir, you can't get in there without your ID and reservation in advance. Gu Jianan looked at the hands of the guards on his arm, his expression could not be surlier. As the successor to the Gu group, he did not care for being treated this way by two nobodies. After a long time, the security still did not budge. In the end, Gu Jianan changed his tactic. Sirs, please kindly let me in. I just want to meet Mr. Yi and see if partnership is a possibility. If everything goes well, I won't forget you. He was almost fawning upon them, but unfortunately, the two guards did not seem to notice. This was hardly a surprise. They were security hired by Mighty Empire, not at all like the others elsewhere. Their work ethic was impeccable in A. City. No one could slip in under their eyes. Since this tactic was not going to work, Gu Jianan quickly came up with another one. A while later, 
a man in a delivery uniform approached Mighty Empire. The wide brim of his cap covered most of his face. The security put their hands on his arm and commanded emotionlessly, raise your head and let us see your face. The man raised his head obediently. However, there was so much filth on his face that the two guards almost puked. They waved him through, saying disgustedly, go go go. Put the delivery on the front counter and come out. Do not loiter. The man nodded and went past the security. When he was safely inside the building, he immediately headed to the nearest stairwell. Then, he took off his cap and clothes, revealing the neat and clean suit underneath. He woke up his phone and, after taking a look at his dirty face, almost puked. He quickly put away his phone and walked towards a bathroom. When he emerged from it a moment later, his face was free of any filth. Needless to say, he was actually Gu Jianan, who could think of nothing that would work except for disguising himself as a deliverman. He heard that the office of Mighty Empire's mysterious president was located on the hundredth floor of the building. Gu Jianan tidied himself up and quickly moved towards the elevator. Inside, he pressed the button, 100, and watched the number of the floor indicator dot go dot up and up while he became more and more excited. He was finally going to meet the legendary figure of Mighty Empire. However, the real reason he was here today was to sort out why Mighty Empire was giving Gu Group such a hard time recently. If it was not for this reason, he would never have entered the building this way. He would ask President Yi in person if he had authorized the abuse or if his subordinates had been acting on their own without him knowing. The two guards at the front door started to feel something was wrong. One of them wondered out loud, where the hell is that deliver man? After thinking for a moment, the other snapped his head up, oh no. It is the man in the suit. The one who spoke first quickly called the front desk with his walkie-talkie, the building is infiltrated. A man in a deliver man's outfit slipped through a moment ago. He might be someone from another company. After receiving the warning, the front desk immediately relayed the message to Lin Ran. Before Gu Jianan reached the hundredth floor, Lin Ran had recognized him from the monitoring system. Gu Jianan was smiling when he was about to step out of the elevator. Ha! Even with such guards, he had managed his way here. However, when he looked ahead, his smile instantly froze. There was Lin Ran, with two guards on each side of him, forming a solid wall. Gu Jianan did not even see what exactly the hundredth floor looked like when Lin Ran ordered the four guards in a flat tone, get him out of here. The security dragged Gu Jianan away while he shouted vehemently, I want to see President Yi. Let me go. Of course, the security wouldn't hear any of it. They kept dragging him along. Gu Jianan was dragged all the way out of the building. Then, the security left him alone. Gu Jianan's expression was horrid. Darkness fell over his face. What a self-important big head. How can he do this to me? He would take over the MO group one day and see if Mighty Empire dares to dot bully him anymore. Let's wait and see if he can dominate a dot city dot forever. Not only did Gu Jianan fail to find out the reason why Mighty Empire had been giving the Gu group a hard time, dot but dot he did not even see their CEO. An evil idea started to form in his head. On the hundredth floor of Mighty Empire, Lin Ran stood in front of Yi Zhongjue in silence. Yi Zhongjue only looked up at him after a while. So, what happened out there? Lin Ran cleared his throat and phrased his account carefully, Boss, Gu Jianan, he disguised himself as a deliver man and entered the building. However, he was caught in time and dragged away. Yi Zhongjue gave Lin Ran a creepy smile, sending shivers down his spine. He lamented inwardly, Boss, would you stop smiling like that? Dot, in time, you said. Yi Zhongjue gave Lin Ran a funny look and narrowed his eyes dangerously, he reached the hundredth floor, for crying out loud. I feel ashamed for you. Lin Ran gave a trembly laugh and said pleadingly, Boss, I'm sorry. I made a mistake, okay. Even so, I still tried my best. Please, forgive me this time. 
watching him putting on a piteous face, Yi Zhongjue could only shake his head. This fella should be awarded with a best assistant of the year. He cast Lin Ran a deadpan glance, preventing him from spitting out what he was about to say. In the end, he laughed nervously and repeated, I'm so sorry. Then get out of my sight and go to work. Thundered Yi Zhongjue. Put Gu Jiannan on the list of people who will never be admitted. Understand. Yes, sir, answered Lin Ran emphatically. All right then. You can go now. Yi Zhongjue rubbed his forehead, feeling a slight headache. He hoped he did not catch a cold the day before yesterday. Lin Ran was about to leave the room, but he stopped himself and asked, Boss, are we still going after the Gu group? Uh dot ha, huh, replied Yi Zhongjue noncommittally. Lin Ran watched Yi Zhongjue closely, not sure if he understood him right. He rolled his eyes over and thought about it. I think he meant yes. After all, he put Gu Jianan on the list, didn't he? Lin Ran returned to his work. Yi Zhongjue consulted his watch. It was well past four, almost time to get off work. He still got some papers to browse and sign, so he quickened his pace, hoping to finish all of them before leaving the company and picking Mo Suqing up at Trend Magazine. Just before it was time to get off work, Mo Suqing's phone rang. She was a little surprised to find the caller to be Yi Zhongjue. Leng Xiao looked at her. What are you doing? Your phone is ringing. Mo Suqing gave her an awkward look and mouthed the words, It's Yi Zhongjue. Leng Xiao nodded knowingly, then you should pick it up. Aren't you newlywed supposed to be inseparable now? Mo Suqing rolled her eyes at her. The girl had made making fun of her a habit of hers. She knew perfectly that it was a conditional marriage. Seeing Mo Suqing stare at herself, Leng Xiao laughed more heartily. I guess you are afraid to pick it up because you feel guilty. Why would I feel guilty, who says I'm afraid? While Leng Xiao stuck her tongue out at her, she picked up the call. Hello. What's up? You are still at work, aren't you? Yeah, answered Yi Zhongjue in a low voice. Stay in your company when it's time to go home. I'll go pick you up. Mo Suqing considered for a moment, watching Leng Xiao peering at herself, and said, All right, I'll wait for you. After hanging up, Leng Xiao slid over and beamed at Mo Suqing. Tell me, what did he say? What's that supposed to mean, I'll wait for you? Dot. She mimicked Mo Suqing's voice, but with much more sweetness. Mo Suqing shivered and got goosebumps all over her arms. She pushed Ling Xiao lightly in a playful manner and said, Yao, stop it. He called to say, Mo Suqing cast that a sidelong glance at Ling Xiao and decided against telling her the truth in the last moment. If she did tell her, she would definitely wait up to steal a look at Yi Zhongjue. Well, he told me to wait for him at home after work, so that he and I could go have dinner together. Tut. Leng Xiao shook her head as if bored. I thought it was something more interesting, speaking of which, that when do you plan to introduce him to me? Staring at the screen, Mo Suqing tapped the keyboard and spoke, I will when there is a chance, and I promise you will be the first one whom I introduce to him. The problem is, he and I are not really that close. Nonsense, exclaimed Leng Xiao, the volume of her voice going right up. You have already slept together, and that's not close. So what will you do when you two do become close? Leng Xiao's words immediately attracted a lot of attention. Mo Suqing would cover her mouth if she knew it would make a difference. She had got used to Leng Xiao saying the first thing that came up her mind, but she dot was very uncomfortable at dot being watched like a giant panda. Leng Xiao gave an embarrassed laugh, sorry, Suqing, you know I like to talk trash, some co-workers had started laughing. Mo Suqing shook her head disapprovingly. Think before you talk next time, okay? Now, quickly finish up your work, it's almost time to go home. You don't want to work overtime, do you? At the mention of going home, Leng Xiao pursed her lips and said, I would rather work overtime, 
seeing her reluctant expression, Mo Suqing leaned closer. What? Why don't you want to go home all of a sudden? Leng Xiao pursed her lips even more. Suqing, I want to move out. What? Mo Suqing was a little stunned. Why? Don't tell me someone mistreats you at home. That's right. Leng Xiao gave some random stuff before her a sweep and said indignantly, You have no idea. There are more and more things that my uncle tries to control. I practically have to ask his permission for everything I do. I feel I have no privacy anymore. This morning, we had a big fight over this. Leng Xiao sounded truly upset. 